Oh, all right, so today we're going to go through January 2010, uh, William Polymers and Analysis. So, first of all, uh, we start off with a nice benzene question here. Um, reacting with bromine, uh, halogen required, right equation with reaction, you don't need to share the halogen carrier. So, nice and easy, you've just got benzene plus Br2 gives you bromobenzene plus HBr. Okay, uh, next one. The chemist found out that when phenyl or cyclohexene reacts with uh, bromine, halogen carries isn't required. Uh, bromine to colorize this phenyl, what other observation would be observed? You'd also see a white precipitate that is a test for a phenyl. Um, draw the structure of the organic bromine. So uh, it's going to be phenyl and then you actually substitute three bromines onto the benzene ring. So 246 tribromophenol. Uh, cyclohexene also decolorizes bromine. Uh, name the organic product uh, form. Um, obviously it's going to be uh, that boy there where the bromine's added across the double bond from cyclohexene. So it's one, two, dibromo, cyclohexane. Right, so we now need to explain the relative resistance of, to bromination of benzene compared to phenol and also compared to cyclohexene. So the first thing to remember is benzene has six delocalized electrons over six carbon-carbon bonds. Um, cyclohexene has two pi electrons localized over one carbon-carbon bond therefore higher electron density than benzene. Uh, for phenol, the lone pair on the oxygen atom can be delocalized into the benzene ring this increases the electron density of the ring and therefore both cyclohexene and phenol and polarize electrophiles more. Oh, right, okay, so uh, moving on, compound A, shown below, uh, is an azo dye. Um, two say synthesis done from an aromatic amine. Draw display formula aromatic amine and the disonium iron. Okay, so uh, let's go through this. So first of all, I need to do the display. So obviously, that is going to be where the phenol has come, and then this part of the molecule has come from my aromatic amine. So if I start off with that, the nitrogen is going to be where that nitrogen is there. Um, so, the first thing I need to do uh, for this one is to convert him into the diazonium iron. Um, in order to do that, I need to um, use sodium nitrite in HCl and have below 10 degrees C, and that would convert him into the diazonium. 
make sure the plus charge is on that nitrogen there. Uh, right, once I've got that one, I then need to add in my phenol. So the next stage would be to add phenol. Add that one there. And that will give me my diazonium. Uh, my that you so my uh, azo dye. That needs to be done in alkaline conditions. So normally sodium hydroxide solution uh, to give me my uh, diazonium. Uh, so liquid padding. Oh right. So another question on hydroxyethanol. Um, notice it's got a primary alcohol there and an aldehyde void there. What would I see when I saw uh, toiletry agent? I'd obviously see a silver mirror um, because uh, I've got an aldehyde group. Write the structural formula. Well, if I do the full one, first of all, um, that's not going to say so. CH2, COOH, like so. Uh, where hydroxy and reactive toiletry agent. That's unchanged, but my other height becomes a carboxylic acid. All Ceracs with acidified dichromate, uh, write an equation for that. So, uh, let's have a look. That's my hydroxyethanol. I need three O's. Um, the reason why, the aldehyde is going to become a carboxylic acid and the alcohol is also going to become a carboxylic acid, for which I need two. Uh, so, write an equation for that. It's going to give me my dye carboxylic acid, like so, and it's also going to give me water as well. I'm now going to reduce this using hydroxyethanol. Um, I will reduce hydroxyethanol using sodium borohydride. Why a structural formula for that? Uh, well, both. I'm going to have a diol now um, because they're both going to become that. Um, for the mechanism, that's your aldehyde. There's a hydride ion. Remember, that's delta plus, that's delta minus. That goes there. That bond, so it's in the middle, breaks to go to the oxygen. To give me this, and then it picks up a hydrogen from water, like so. That breaks to give me my product. Sorry, that should be an H, uh, OH there, H there, H there, plus OH and minus, like so. Okay, uh, name the process by which, uh, going on to um, add amino acids, TLC, how do we separate, is adsorption. Like so, how uh, was treated to show very specific about um, different alpha amino acids? Explain how you could analyse the chromatogram to identify the amino acid. Um, could measure how far each spot travels up the chromatogram. Um, relative to the solvent front, um, and then compare those values with known ones. So calculate the RF value and compare that value with known ones for amino acids. Several amino acids have structures that are very similar. Suggest why that could cause problems. Um, if they've got similar structures, they're, uh, they like to have similar RF values. Um, so it'd be difficult to separate. They like to be on the same place on your TLC plate. Right, we then got various alpha amino acids being shown. State the general formula for your alpha amino acids. Um, like so. Four stereoisomers are shown below. Let's see if we can draw these out. So, 
Right, so what I've done is uh, I copied out that structure three times. The way I would do it, uh, if you keep this group the same, same, so NH2, NH2, like so, so that is the same in all three and up there. Uh, what you can do is for the first one, just swap these two groups, but keep the bottom ones the same. Then keep the top the same, but swap the bottom groups, like so, around. And then the next thing to do would be to swap both. like so. So I swap the top, swap the bottom, and then swap both. Right, so for this next one, it wants me to show three different alpha amino acids at different pHs, and it's given me the R groups up here. So I've drawn the R groups on all three. So I've just got to complete the last pair and have a play around. So aniline, pH six. pH six is actually its isoelectric point, so I would have formed the zither ion, like so. Glutamic acid at pH 10. pH 10, well, it's actually H.2.3 project, that is a very alkaline condition. So I'm gonna lose that H there. The other carboxylic acid will also become deprotonated as well. And then lysine at pH 2, pH 2, well lysine's pH isolation point is 90%, so that is very acidic conditions. So I would have protonated both the nitrogens like so. Okay, for the next one then, it's given me a polypeptide and I need to identify the alpha amino acids in it. So you're looking for the R groups here that are coming off that central carbon. If you do that related to the uh, uh, table on the opposite side, uh, you see it is actually uh, that one. in that order. So that's bearing, that is glycine, and that's leucine. Right, I now need to uh, give me nylon. Uh, I'm sure you've made that. Um, short check to show me below, draw the one of them. So you look for your amide bonds, like so. That is obviously going to become your dicarboxylic acid. So you literally copy out just popping on the N groups like so. Uh, 